Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Oswego State Lakers ACHA Hockey. I'm your host, play-by-play -play and color commentary, Ben Greco, alongside cameraman Jerry Pritchard. We have Lakers' second game of the season, Oswego State versus Canisius College. Canisius has played a lot on the season. They have four games played and a couple games along the league in the league in the NECHL, including an overtime win and a shootout loss. They are have a 301 overall record with a 101 NECHL record. Last time out for Canisius, however, was a 4-3 overtime win over the Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Four different goal scorers in the game, and they actually have played a couple league games against SUNY Cortland including the shootout loss for the second game of the season, 7-6. to six. A couple top scorers for Canisius include Ryan Loger, who leads the team with one goal and five assists for six points total. And the other players include Nick Breer with four goals and assists, and Zach Grace, who has five assists for five points. Johnny Fritz has been the main goaltender for four games. He has played in all four games with a 3-1 and one record, including a .936 save percentage and a 280 goals allowed against average this team has a lot of scoring i believe based off what i saw they have 21 goals in four games at least 13 players have one goal and 17 of the large roster from canisius have registered at least one point again like i said those two NH NECHL games have been against suny Cortland, and oswego state is entering the ice now oswego state if you're just tuning in is playing in their second game of the season after their season opener and home opener last night as well as league opener. They have a 1-0-0 record with a 1-0-0 NECHL record. They beat Cornell University last night 6-1 to and had six different goal, sc goal scorers for the team. Luke Myers is leading the team after the one game with three points including a goal and two assists. His goal actually came with an unassisted in the slot Fantastic Dango, if you were watching last night over the pad of the Cornell's goaltender. Alex Goulos was in goal for, for about, I'd say about 95% of the game until backup goaltender Parapesco came in for the last five minutes. Goulos had 33 saves in net and only allowed one goal. The team went 5-for-5 five five on the penalty kill, but unfortunately went over 2 on the power play for their special teams. Opening the season against Cornell is a big win for the team, according to a couple of the captains and alternate captains. And they are continuing, like I said, the NECHL schedule against Canisius. Basically the same lines from yesterday, minus a fourth-line offensive change, according to assistant coach Jordan Alhart. And same goaltender will be starting, Alex Galos. And also goaltender Eric Piotrowski will actually be starting for Canisius tonight, or this afternoon, I should say. And we're going to have the starting lineups very shortly for you. We have about five minutes until we announce those national anthem and then we'll get underway for Oswego State's second game of the season. We do have the starting rosters from our public announcer and we will be underway momentarily. Canisius will start on defense with Brian Bosicki. He's going to be. And number 19, John Hazlitt. At forward, number 21, Ryan Loger will be starting the team's leading scorer. Number 13, Justin Durkee will also be starting. And number 22, Doran Oaken. And like I said earlier, Eric Piotrowski, who has one game, has 14 saves and allowed five goals in his one game, will be starting for Canisius. Oswego State will be starting with defenseman, or excuse me, with, the, with defenseman C.J. Walsh and Sean O'Neill for their starting line, the second defensive line. Forwards will include the third line from yesterday that was very key, including Luke Myers at center, Kyle McNamara at left wing, and Adam Mar Marvin, excuse me, at the right. And Alex Golos will be starting in net. That third line was key yesterday, however. McNamara did have a goal and assist. Luke Myers with a goal and two assists. And Adam Marvin had the goal, had a goal tallying nearly seven, eight points for the line for the Lakers. Both teams will hit the center of the ice. 
or excuse me, Oswego will hit their blue line as we honor America with the National Anthem of America. Starting five for both teams will crowd around their goaltender for a quick pre-game huddle and discuss the game plan as they open up for the first period of play in just a couple short moments. Like I said, Oswego State 1-0 and after the win against Cornell. Canisius 3-0-1 after their most recent, actually their most recent game of loss in overtime to Indiana University of Pennsylvania. Excuse me, overtime win. That is my fault there. Chris Simmons was pretty confident after the win last night, Oswego State's head coach, and he's going to hopefully keep the same confidence with a very high scoring and deep Canisius roster. I was informed by Jordan All, however, that Canisius will be a lot better with their roster and has all their players listed compared to Cornell last night. If you were turned in, there were about four or five names that were not on the roster. And as we get underway, Canisius will take the face off and goes back to their defense. And we are opening play for the for at least 60 minutes. Sugo State will tip it into the zone, into the goaltender, Eric Piotrowski, who will pause play only 13 seconds in. And it'll go to the left side of the, yes, the left side of the cage from our point of view. Luke Myers is taking the face off along with number 22, Richard, excuse me, Doran Oaken of Canisius. Back to O'Neill who takes the shot, Alder Piotrowski, and it's recovered by McNamara, who dumps it back in to Myers. Myers will try to get it out and goes over to McNamara, who gets a shot, but it is blocked up in front, and over to CJ Walsh, who jumps it in to McNamara. Walsh with a little scrum there to try to get it, but Kanisha comes away with it. O'Kara comes away with it. And it is stopped by Galos, who pa and then Okan passes it over to Flick. O'Neill does recover, but he does dump it in so that Oswego State can change their lines. Marvin is out and pressuring and forechecking alongside Sean Mooney. Chris Carey out there as well. Theo Cup takes the puck alongside his defenseman, fellow defenseman, Adam Wands. Chris Wands, excuse me. A shot from Nick Matro, but it's blocked away by Pio Tresco. Sean Mooney will take the puck and skates around a little bit before passing it off to Chris Carey. Chris Carey back to Wands. Wands with a shot, but it is stopped by Piotrowski and pushed to the side. Canisius will take the puck back, and it goes over to Jonathan Newcomb, who gives it right back to Oswego and dumped in by Cup. Sugo State just dumping it in now just to keep the Canisius offense on their toes. It is offsides, but, cor but they will recover. And is once again dumped back in and recovered by Tim Biddle. 
Mike Lemieux, and also along with Chase Knees. And then this pass back to Jay Chaffin. Jay Chaffin with a shot, but blocked by Canisius. And it's gonna and it's gonna be recovered by Martin Simonek before Canisius could get to him. Mike Lemieux on his Canisius offense spin. Fiddle. Knees does come away with it, however, and passes it over to Bobby Vasta, but it's given away, and he recovers. Knees tries, almost gets for control, but it is given to Canisius after a skating attempt from Jay Chapman to get, try to recover. Dumped in by Mike Lemieux, and it's gonna be a quick offensive line change as Canisius tries to catch them. A little short-handed there, but it's stopped by McNamara. McNamara skates up the ice now, and it's given over to Canisius, who has a one-on-one -on -one opportunity with Anthony Vekic, and stopped by Galos. Recovered by Oswego State, as Kyle McNamara will recover, but passes it off to number 27, Adam Marvin. Canisius does come away with a three on uh, open opportunity and passed and scored by number 10, Anthony Vekic, who gets behind Golos and taps it in. 16-23 remaining in the first period. Canisius, Golden Griffiths will take a one goal advantage over the Lakers. That's Vekic's first goal of the season alongside his two assists and his third point of the season. And there will be a penalty for Oswego State, actually. Number 17, Sean O'Neill, will head into the penalty box, and we will await. And we will await the call. Back underway here as we await the penalty call. And it is a slashing call on Sean O'Neill. Most likely after the after the play or right before they right during they scored. Canisius is holding possession, however. And we'll keep possession. The assist from the Vekic goal is given to number five, Matt Canada, his fourth assist of the season and fifth point overall. Golos stops it with a pad there after a light, light backhand attempt. Golos will hold the puck with 15, 28, seven left, excuse me, in, first, in the first period with 104 left on the O'Neill slashing call. Golos only did allow, like I said, only one goal yesterday early in the game, but Oswego State was able to come back with six goals, five of which were in the second period alone. A huge period with that third line, but Oswego State will take possession, excuse me, Canisius will take possession here once again on the power play. Almost tipped a little bit by the defenseman of Oswego State, but it goes to the side of Galos, and Canisius will keep it. Over to, to Paolo, excuse me, and now Zorowski. Zorowski will skate around with it and goes to Biddle. Biddle back to Powell. Gets around his defenseman and gives it back over to Powell. And as he skates back, it is cleared one more time with 25 seconds left on the penalty kill. 14.45 remaining in the first period, 1-0, Canisius College. Biddle does have the puck as he skates in and passes it back to his teammate Zorowski. But it is stopped by Sean Mooney who clears it down the ice with five seconds remaining on the penalty kill. And Oswego State does return to even strength with 14.20 left in the first period, but Canisius does have possession, but is given to number six, C.J. Walsh. C.J. Walsh will just dump it in as the Lakers do try to cover from Canisius College. 
Wands almost clears it back in, but just fans on it. Nick Matro covers for him, but Wands is able to get back there and does fall after trying to hit. And it is cleared out of the zone. No icing as that was Canisius that shot it all the way back down after a missed pass. Chris Carey for checking. And it's stopped by Wands, who gives it over to Carey. Over to Myers. And now it's with Theo Cup, one of the alternate captains for Oswego State. Try to stop by Adam Marvin, but cannot get a, the, his back on it as it went along the glass. Myers will just stick with it and give a nice little hip check there. C.J. Walsh sticks with the puck and gives it over to Kyle McNamara, who gives it over to Myers. A shot and a goal from number 27, Adam Marvin, his second of the game. And we have a tie game with 12.58 remaining in the first period. Adam Marvin with a shot from the slot and most likely assisted from number 20, Luke Myers, for his fourth point of the season and third assist of the season. But we will get official confirmation from our statistician momentarily. Oswego State does tie it up. 12.58 remaining in the first period. 1-2-1. One, one. Oswego State does take possession. So Sean O'Neill bringing it up the ice and gives it to tries to give it to Bobby Vasta, but it's taken by Canisius College. And it's recovered by Bobby Vasta. They give it back to Canisius on the far side. Shot from Walsh, but it is blocked and given almost to Knees, who tried to tap it in and it was almost ha had to be stopped by the diving goaltender Piotrowski, but it just went to the left of him. Canisius with the puck, number 21, Ryan Loger, who brings it up the ice, but is stopped by Sean O'Neill. Canisius College holding on to it as the Suga State does recover and clears it out of the zone. A shot from number 13 of Canisius College, Justin Durkee, as it's gloved down by Glos and it's passed out, and play will resume. Hebert tries to get it out of zone, he does, but it's given back to Canisius and dumped. So there's a whole line attempt on the Adam Marvin goal. Luke Myers and Kyle McNamara is given are given the primary and secondary assist there. That is McNamara's second assist of the season third point overall. That third line going to be critical for the Lakers we have seen early on in the first couple of games as Oswego State does recover in their own zone, but given to Kanishis' defense who slaps at Galos, but it's gloved down and play will be halted with 11.08 remaining in the first period. Oswego State will take possession. It's given to Canisius, however. But almost taken away by Chris Carey, and it is taken away by Martin Simonek. Almost cleared, but given to Nick Matru, who skates up the ice with it. Sean Mooney with it, gives it to the Canisius defenseman. And Tyler Zorowski of Canisius will just shoot it in behind the blue line, but it's padded away and slid to the side by Galos. Mooney once again with the puck. Almost gets it to Metro, but it's stopped by Anthony Vekic, who does have the earlier Canisius goal. Jake Chapman did lose sight of it, but he does block the shot from hitting Galos as he will give time for his Oswego State line mates to figure out the play. Maybe set something up to try to take the lead here. Dumped in by Chris Carey, and it's recovered by Nick Matro, who gives it, oh, attempts to get over, excuse me, to Luke Myers. Theo Cup does have the puck, and he'll pass back to Wands to allow his offensive forwards to 
change. So we go state will halt scrum for the puck and the near corner there and there's off the zone and will come away with it. Chris Wands comes away with the puck and bank pass it to Adam Marvin who tries the pass over but blocked by a sliding defenseman Ethan Weisberger. Excuse me, not Ethan Weisberger, John Hazlitt from the Canisius College of Golden Griffiths who easily stops an open chance after an attempt the cross pass that could have easily Giving the Lakers a 2-1 lead had, in the, had there been a connection on the shot. Hazlitt sacrificing his body early on. And also there will be a Canisius penalty to number 21, Ryan Loger. And we will await the official call there. Swigo State further on their first power play of the game. 9.20 remaining in the first period. Over to Carey, and it's cleared by Canisius, but Sean O'Neill will recover. Give it to Myers, back to O'Neill. And O'Neill over to Myers, who's over, skates it just a little bit, but gets it through the legs of his Canisius defender, and O'Neill dumps it into the zone. Picked up by Chris Carey, who tries to look for a shot and not able to get it, and O'Neill's given it back to Carey. And over to number 18, Kyle McNamara, who and Canisius does clear it down. Chris Carey beat into the puck with 103 left and on the penalty with 827 remaining in the first period. Loger's penalty is also a slashing call given the power play opportunity for the Lakers almost as Second hand, second opportunity for the Lakers from McNamara was not able to get a puck on it. As the Canisius will clear the puck one more time with 35 seconds remaining on the penalty. Eight minutes remaining in the period. One to one, Lakers versus Canisius College. Lakers will have about one more solid opportunity to skate in and hopefully convert on this to take the two one lead. Almost a shot from Knees right in front of Piotrowski, but can just not get a stick on it. Knees will give it over to Cup, and now over to Lemieux. Lemieux passes it down to Nick Matro. Nick Matro gets, and also Lemieux gets a shot in. As the penalty expires, Canisius College will return to even strength with Oswego State holding on to possession, but Canisius College gets it right back and looks to recover here. But it is given to Lemieux, who has a shot and is gloved down by Piotrowski, who makes a great sliding save to poke check it away from knees. And there's going to be an icing called on Canisius College. Piotrowski keeping his team in this after all of it, after some sliding around to get the puck away from the net, a little bit out of position, almost a little bit of a risky play there, but able to keep the game tied with seven minutes remaining, one to one. Do not see something like that often with a goaltender sliding around. Usually he rides on his defenders a little bit there, but he decided to take matters into his own hands. So Kinesius Collis does come away with the puck as they will attempt to clear down with Stan Paulau. But it is recovered by Andrew Cardi, who did not play for the Lakers yesterday. He was a healthy scratch and it almost goes off their defender, Martin Simonek, who almost goes off his body into the net behind Alex Galos, but is quickly picked up by Galos with 641 remaining. Cardi was, like I said, a scratch yesterday and is on the ice for his first game of the season. Now over to Chapin, and a hit from number 20 on Mike Lemieux on Canisius's Brian Mosicki, almost into the penalty box as Oswego State recovers and dumps it in. They are offsides just by a hair, and Mike Knees was not thrilled about that call. Lemieux almost gets it, but it is cleared down and tipped by Canisius to avoid the icing. 
goes over to Bobby Vasta, and now over to Chapman once again. Chapman tries to give it to Knees. Knees gets in front of his, but his gets in front of his defenders, but actually gets his stick hit by Canisius College, and cannot get a firm hit on the puck. Remains one to one with 6:02 remaining. Stop, however, by Piotrowski, and will be on the right side of the net. Nisha College just come away with it with Ryan Logar taking the puck and passing it, but as you can see, recovering with Chris Carey. Now over to Sean Mooney, who shoots it and gets it off the crossbar just over the shoulder of Piotrowski. Now to Wands, who shoots it right into the chest of Piotrowski with 542 remaining. Oswego, Sta Oswego State, excuse me, with 11 shots in the game, Canisius with nine, fairly even there. However, it does remain one to one. Kenesha's College with a broken stick. Not exactly sure whose it was, but Oswego State does drop it off back into their bench. Oswego State recovers with Sean Mooney passing it almost to Chris Carey, but it's cut off by Kenesha's. However, Carey sticking with the puck, and it's dumped in by Wands. College gets around and Piddle, Biddle, excuse me, is going to skate around with it before it's given to a teammate, Anthony Vekic, who sh and then up past to Vili Lapalainen, who shoots it right into the chest of Galos. Lapalainen, most likely with probably the most unusual name on this roster, Vili Lapalainen. Do not remember his hometown, however, it is listed on their website. And there is a penalty to number 20 of the Oswego State Lakers, Luke Myers, for tripping. With five minutes remaining, Oswego State will go on the penalty kill for the second time. They are one for one on the day. Oswego State does recover, almost cleared, but it's stopped by Anthony Vekic with his glove and given over to Ryan Loger. Loger with a shot, close up shot, but close stops it and just sits on it. They get the freeze in play with 145 remaining on the penalty, 445 remaining in the period. Sego State, like I said yesterday, was 100% on the penalty kill, went 5 4 5, especially in the latter parts of the game when there were a decent amount of penalties, but it is clear it's going to be skated up by Mike Nees, not even cleared as he shows off his speed just a little more and passes it off to Bobby Vasta, but it's taken by Kanichis. Mike Knees thought he'd get through it. He almost did, showing off his speed. Like I said yesterday, he is probably one of the faster skaters on the team, if not the fastest, from Plano, Texas. Tipped off the post from Doran Oaken, who just misses the one-timer attempt off the backhand. But it's stopped by Galos for stoppage in play with 115 remaining on the penalty on the power play and 415 remaining in the period as both teams will change their lines to keep each other fresh. Kanishas does come away with a puck and goes to Stan Paolau. Plays a little pass and goes over to Zurichowski. Zurichowski just dumps it around and over to Paolau. A little bit of a confusion there, but it will go back to Paolau and over to Grace. Now with Aldridge, who gives it back to Grace. Just tries to skate a little bit to get something started. Over to Aldridge, who gives it to Paolo Lau, who takes a shot, but over the net of Alex Galos. It is stopped by Galos once again after a shot and cleared by the Lakers with 22 seconds remaining on the penalty kill, 320 remaining in the opening period, and cleared once again, not all the way, but given a little shot by Wands, who gets back to it and clears it once again. And give it to McNamara, who has some wide open ice on the on the shorthanded attempt, and gets it in. Kyle McNamara 
Shorthanded, goal wide open, open breakaway opportunity, and the Lakers take a 2-1 lead with 3.04 remaining in the opening period. McNamara's second goal of the season and his second point of the game after the secondary assist on the Marvin goal. He's got two points in the game so far. And Wads most likely will get credited with that assist after just clearing it down, trying to get it down, but McNamara does skate down to get it. Restarting play with three minutes remaining and the penalty does expire. This week State returns to even strength after scoring the short-handed goal. Kyle McNamara now just dumps it down. And Marvin does get to the puck, but gives it away to Canisius. Big hit by Chris Wands, stopping a two-on-two -two opportunity. And it's Suigo State where we retain the puck with Theo Cup. Given to Marvin. Marvin will get the pass over to Luke Myers who scores again. I should say scores again, scores for the first time, but gets the one-timer attempt. Luke Myers, 224 remaining in the first period, and Lakers take a 3-1 lead over the Canisius College Golden Griffiths. Very close opportunity for both Canisius to stop it. Piotrowski cannot get there just in time. Luke Myers almost too close to, go to Piotrowski, but he gets the goal. 2.18 remaining in the first period as Oswego State takes a 3-1 advantage as play resumes in the opening period. Kyle McNamara's goal is officially credited by from an assist with Chris Wands. Chris Wands' first point of the season on that first line defense. It is an icing for Canisius College as Sean O'Neill. Actually, no, Sean O'Neill gets there just a little too soon, and the icing is waved off. Canisius College will hold the puck on the near side. Over to Masicki, who does take a shot, and it's stopped by Golos. Now with Canada, who dumps it just back in, and it's stopped by Oswego State as Mooney loses the puck, and so does number 13 from Canisius, Justin Durkee. Picked up by C.J. Walsh, who tries to get it in, but it's stopped by his fellow number six, Stan Powell out from Canisius. Blocked in the chest by knees, but it's given away to Anthony Vekic. And a little bit of a goaltender interference there, and Glos is hurt, he cannot get up, and he is down, it looks like a lip of the neck, and there is a little shoving after laying on Glos. Bobby Vasta taking most of the aggression out trying to get at Canisius' player there for laying on Golos. Golos takes his helmet off now and attempts to uh, recover for the next couple of seconds. Vasta will get a penalty alongside the captain for Canisius, Paolao. Just And there are going to be a little bit of a captain discussion to figure out what the penalties are. Chris Timmons is calling his team over to discuss something, maybe to even say to take out the aggression in play and not after the whistle. He doesn't look thrilled with his team, how they acted right there, but there is going to be some four on four action. We will wait the official's official call from our statistician and slash public announcer. Galos is throwing on his helmet, or attempts to throw on his helmet as he tries to get on with the blocker on his hand. And it looks like he will remain in the game. It is, like I said, going to be four on four hockey and will, actually no, it's going to be, yes, four on four. It looks like there's two players, however, in the Canisius box. Number 13, Justin Durkee will be in there as well. 
Excuse me. It is a four, five on four power play. It looks like there might be a little bit more of a major there for not minor penalties. It is only five on four, and Oswego State will be on the power play for the second time. Wands with a shot, but is by stopped by Piotrowski. And we will await official confirmation about what the penalties are. Um, those two penalties, most likely majors and can or minors, and canceling each other out, and it is cleared down by Canisius. Durkee is serving the two-minute penalty. Hit from Mooney as Metro skates it back down into the zone and clears it, dumps it over, excuse me, to Mike Lemieux. And Mike Lemieux gives it to Theo Cup, who attempts to give it back to Mooney. But now is there a two-on-two opportunity with Kenesha shorthanded. Gets a shot off, but is blocked by Lemieux on the back leg and goes over Galos. And the penalty does end. I apologize for not getting that number out there, but there's 105 remaining on the Canisius penalty at the end of the first period. Lakers one, Griffiths, excuse me, Lakers three, Griffiths one, at the end of 20 minutes. We'll be back momentarily with the official penalties and also any other stats that we might have missed. Oswego State three, Canisius College one. We'll be back momentarily on YouTube Live with Oswego State ACHA.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Oswego State ACHA Hockey. I'm your host, Ben Grieco, on play-by-play -play and a little color commentary. We have a couple minutes before the second period does start back up between Oswego State and Canisius College. However, I thought I'd describe a couple of the goals or explain a couple of the goals that came through as well as that last couple minute penalties that went through as well. For Oswego State, there are three go were three goals in the first period. First goal came from Adam Marvin with assists from Luke Myers and Kyle McNamara, that third line proving strong again. Second goal was a Kyle McNamara shorthanded goal with assist from Chris Wands. Also, Luke Myers scored the third goal, close one-timer attempt with from Adam Marvin. That third line with all the points, minus Chris Wands, who was on the first line defense, the Ridgewood, New Jersey native. And for Canisius College, the lone goal came from, was excuse me, was Vili Lapalainen from number five, Matt Canada. That's the lone goal for Canisius College as Lakers begin to line up in their hallway to enter the locker, to enter the ice. The last penalties that were in the end of the first period was a little confusing both for us and as well as both teams that they tried to figure out what the power play or four on four was. So what happened was Bobby Vasta from Oswego State was called for a cross checking along with number 13, Justin Durkee from Canisius College, which both canceled each other out so had they not gotten a second penalty, it would have still remained four. It would have remained four on four. However, the additional penalty from Stan Powell, out a roughing call, made it five on four to give Oswego State the power play advantage. And there is some time remaining. However, the uh, clock operator accidentally let the clock run on the power play uh, penalty minute. Excuse me, while the clock was running down, as you saw for intermission. So we will see how long is left. I believe I remember seeing 105 left on the penalty. Alex Galos was knocked down a little bit at dirt before that roughing call, and as well as a couple cross checks. Um, took his helmet off to recover, but he did remain in the game, and he looks to be leading his team out for the second period, the middle 20 minutes of the game. Oswego State with 15 shots compared to Kenichis as 13. And Piotrowski allowed all three goals. He has allowed one goal, excuse me, he's allowed five goals already on the season in his one game. and only had 14 saves in his one game prior. Makes you wonder if they will bring out Johnny Fritz, who has been their main goal, who's played in all four games for Canisius. But Alex Goulos will head to his goal on the opposite side as the Lakers take the ice and get ready for the middle 20. Canisius College not ready to come out yet as they close the door and Oswego State will have the ice to themselves for just a couple more seconds. Makes me wonder what Canisius might be saying as a referee linesman does walk in to let Canisius know, hey, the game is still going on. There is not only one period in the sport. There are three as Oswego State has a couple more seconds to talk about strategy as well as a couple more stretching moments. The coaches do exit from the locker room and will walk across the ice, but we have not seen the Canisius players walk out yet as the middle intermission does, or the first intermission, excuse me, does expire. 20 minutes goes back up in the clock as we wait Canisius College, who now exits their hallway, led by Captain Paulau. Excuse me, by goaltender Potrowski. Paulau will give some high fives before he has to skate over to the penalty box with 105 remaining on the penalty. Canisius College not all that used to being down after 20 minutes. However, they have had a couple lot obviously had the one overtime loss and there were a lot of goals scored, but they have been the dominant offensive team as both number 13 for Canisius College, Justin Durkee, as well as Bobby Vassa take their seats at the penalty box along with captain Stan Paulau of Canisius College. Lakers still on the power play for, as I said earlier, 1.05 as we are underway in the middle period and Oswego State will come away with the puck back to Mooney. 
It seems to be over to Sean O'Neill, who gives it up to Myers, who has an earlier goal, but oh, but is cannot hold on to the puck. And Canisius College jumps it back down. Myers holds on to the puck and gives it over to O'Neill. And O'Neill is going to try to let his forwards reset. And that goes from Myers over to Carey and oh, back to Kyle McNamara. Tries to get the shot off, but back to Carey who recovers. And it's given. Actually, he keeps it. And it's recovered. Oswego State will hold on to the puck, though, with John O'Neill. Over to Adam Marvin, who tries to keep the puck as well. Canisius College with the clear, however, with five seconds remaining on the penalty, 19 minutes left to go in the middle period. Both players with the canceled with the canceled out penalties will have to remain in the box until there is a stoppage of play, so they do not have six on six hockey as Canisius College returns to even strength, but Oswego State has the puck. Myers with the puck, who looks to get to a defenseman, but they were changing lines. From McNamara over to Hubert. And it's one on one, or two on two now for Canisius College and Oswego State. Hubert with a little defense there, recovering for his defenseman. Adam Marvin now, and gives it to Canisius College, but it's cleared by O'Neill. O'Neill clears it down the ice. Kyle, given to Kyle McNamara without really much of a contest, but it's slid past Piotrowski. And Piotrowski did not even have to touch that one as Canisius College recovers. Up the ice now with Matt Canada, who gives it over to Jonathan Newcomb. Wands hits it down the ice to Hubert. And Hubert will hit it over to Wands once again, who sh shoots it right at Piotrowski and just pads it away. Theo Cup now with the puck skating backwards and gives it to Wands, who just tips it into the offensive zone. And Canisius will recover. Wands now waiting for his forwards to reset behind the net and gives it over to Cardi, like I said earlier in his first game of the season. It's given to Golos off the corner, off a, a bank from Canisius College, and it will be stopped with 17-15 remaining in the first second period. And both players from the penalty boxes will return to their benches to be reinstated. On the right side of the net for Oswego State in their zone, and Canisius College will come away with the puck off the draw. However, Sean Mooney does recover, and it's passed over to Nick Matro. Nick Matro just overskates it a little bit, and it's almost grabbed again by Chris Carey before Canisius grabs it. Shot from Canisius College, Spencer Castleberry, who goes over Golos, and does not give him the shot on goal. A little bit of scrum there between Chris Carey as well as Biddle of Canisius College, but it's cleared out into the benches. Actually, you probably saw it fly through the fly across the camera path, but it does not come anywhere near the press box. Thank God. Canisius College does recover and shoots it. X Golos, that shot was from John Hazlitt. But Golos will just cover a 60 39 remaining in the middle period. Still 3 to 1 Lakers. On the right side of Golos for the faceoff. Knees will take the faceoff for Oswego State as Canisius recovers. And it is shot from Canisius College, Ryan Loger, but stopped by Golos. And that second shot goes wide. Michael Lemieux is given a check but knocks down his defenseman instead, Chris Caffel. Excuse me, not Chris Caffel. It was Doran Oaken who falls down himself. Michael Mew wins that one. A shot from Oaken, who gets the goal in the slot and is a little bit of a scrum there after the goal. And it looks like there will be a penalty, but nonetheless, Oaken does get the goal with 16-10 remaining in the middle period. 3-2, Lakers. 
Unsure what the little bit of scuffle there was all about after the goal, but it appears Canisius might be going on the penalty kill after all that. With Canisius pleading. Justin Durkee will sit in the box for the Griffiths. As Oswego State goes on their third power play of the game. Lakers now leading 3-2 with 16.07 remaining in the second period. And Oswego State has the puck on the power play. Theo Cup has the puck. Skates back and tries to get something started for a full rush. So the Oaken goal is assisted by number 20 run Ryan Loger. Loger now has seven points with six assists, and that is Oaken's first point of the season and also his first goal. Knees skates up the ice, showing off the speed once again, who cannot hold on to the puck, but it is given over to Mooney. Cup, what is tipped by Kenichi's College, who tries going to try to skate up. And does beat Mooney. Does he beat Theo Cup or Galos? No, Galos will stop it. As Mooney is Cup did lose his stick, but it, Lakers remain with the one goal advantage. 104 remaining on the penalty to 15 12 remaining in the middle period as Oswego State brings it up the ice. No one there for Oswego State as the Canadian College can clear it once again. And CJ Walsh will recover with Billy Lapinari, just Lapinainen, excuse me, right on his tail. Life in line and trying to give him a little confusion there, but cannot get it. The penalty to Durkee is a roughing penalty. That's his second penalty of the game after the cross check earlier when Galos was hit. 25 seconds remaining on the penalty. A big hit from Matt Wistowski on Chris Carey, or excuse me, on CJ Walsh. Canisius will recover with 15 seconds remaining on the penalty, 14 25 remaining in the middle period. So you can stay rule recover with five seconds remaining on their power play. It will just try to hold it to head possession as, as Kenesha's College does return to even strength. A shot from Kenesha's College wide open from Jonathan Newcomb, but it is stopped by Galos. So you can stay recover, but cannot hold on. That was Kyle McNamara, cannot hold on, and it will be a stoppage of play. There is a cross-checking penalty, however, called, and it looks like on Kenesha's College, going to be on Gus Aldridge to give Oswego State another power play, their fourth of the game. The referee not liking the cross-checking so far in this game. That's the third cross-checking call. There were also two roughing calls early on, but Oswego State will go on their fourth power play. And he just will attempt to clear, but Mike Lemieux holds on to it and gives it over to Theo Cup, but cannot get it in time. Over to Lemieux. Then over to Theo Cup once again. Gets around his defenseman. Knees with the puck now as he skates up with Chris Carey to the middle. And back to Theo Cup to try to set something up. Over to Lemieux. Gives it down to Metro. Knees almost gets a stick on it, but it's cleared out from a Kenesha stick and given back to Theo Cup with 123 remaining on the penalty, 13 18 remaining in the middle period. Matro now with the puck as he skates in and get, tries to get it on Piotrowski, but it goes off the pad and into the netting behind the cage. It will remain in the zone for Oswego State's offense as there's 112 remaining on the penalty, 3 2. Lakers, 13-09 remaining in the middle period as Kinesha still tried to plead to get the puck into the middle of the neutral zone, but the ref does not budge. Kinesha does win the faceoff, but it is recovered by O'Neill. O'Neill with the puck now, gives it to Myers with a defensive right on him, and Kinesha's College will clear. And there is an open opportunity for Kinesha's College, Matt Wazowski. But cannot, but there's no one there to help him out as the Oswego State's Chris Carey will cover. 
Again, a miscommunicated pass with a defenseman right on it, but Oswego State will recover once again. 45 seconds remaining on the penalty. Pass up to Kyle McNamara, who's got a shot opportunity, but it's stopped by Pio Trowski. Over to Myers, who gives it to Sean O'Neill with a shot, but it's stopped by Pio Trowski. O'Neill recovers, however, and it's given to Biddle. Now with McNamara, who shot, has a shot, but it goes wide. And it's stopped by Myers along with Biddle, who scrummed for the puck with Chris Carey and Billy Lapanine and entering the scrum. Recovered by Kadisha's College with eight seconds remaining on the penalty, 12 of four remaining in the middle period. Kadisha's College will, will return to even strength without a blemish. And it looks like there will be a another penalty called. Maybe it, it looks like there's a little confusion right now. And it, oh, excuse me, it is going to be yes, it is going to be a penalty on Oswego State. Excuse me for the pause there from Brett Dawson. And it w Oswego State will go on the penalty kill after a couple power play attempts, hoping to preserve the 3-2 lead. Mike knees in center for the Oswego State Lakers as he tries to win the faceoff to clear the puck, but it does go to Kadisha's College. Over to Oaken, who has the earlier goal. Back to Oaken behind the net. Over. The Loger, who takes a shot, but it's blocked by Kalos, and it's cleared, almost cleared. It almost looked like it went outside, but is recovered by Canisius and stopped by Galos after a one-timer tap from Doran Oaken. One thirty-two remaining on the penalty for Oswego State with 11.25 remaining in the middle period. Canisius now with a shot advantage, 20-18 to 18 over Oswego State. Oswego State, however, still has the 3-2 lead and goals. Canisius does win the faceoff there, but is fanned, and it almost is cleared by Hubert, but cannot get a stick on it as it goes down behind the net in the corner. With Jonathan Newcomb now as it goes back to Biddle. Biddle's going to give it back to Newcomb, however, as Newcomb takes a shot and stopped by Galos. It is stopped and gone into the corner. Canisius, excuse me, it looks a little scrum there. No one has full possession of it, but it does go to Canisius College's Tyler Zerikowski. Tyler Zerikowski takes a shot and a goal! Kadisha College ties the game with a Zerikowski power play goal. 10.50 remaining in the second period. 3 2 3. Zerikowski takes advantage to give the Kadisha Golden Griffiths a tie game. And it is a whole new game now with 10.50 remaining in the middle period. We will await an official assist from our statistician. Canisius College wins the face off at the middle of the circle. It is a block shot as Canisius College gets it back with Theo or uh, Chris Wands, excuse me, grabs the puck and is given to CJ Walsh and now to Nick Matro who tries to skate it up the ice. Canisius with the upper hand now in the second period. And they have tied the game with 10.07 remaining in the period. Given to Chris Carey, who just is tries to dump it down but cannot clear it. Blocked by Carey with a shot from John Hazlett. Well, it sounds like it looks like the assist is going to go for Kenesha College's goal from Jonathan Newcomb to number 11, Tyler Zurichowski. Zurichowski's first, so excuse me, fourth goal of the season and his fourth point of the season. Newcomb's second assist of the season for three points total. Vigo State does recover 
but is given to Kanichas College with an open shot attempt, but is stopped. Matt Wisotsky tried to get the goal there, but cannot stop after a couple of weeks ago. Defenders stop him. Luke Myers lost control of it in the skates and cannot find it, and it's Kanichas College will keep the puck with 9.05 remaining in the second period. Cup is able to clear the zone, and Kinesis, but Kanichas College will go off sides after a little miscommunication there in the middle of the second period. We are halfway through regulation, a little more than halfway through regulation, I should say, with 8.58 remaining in the middle period, and it will enter the neutral zone for the Lakers and Kanishas College. So you go State gets possession of the puck. C.J. Walsh will bring it up the ice. He gets around his defender, gets the shot off, and right into Piotrowski's chest. Mike Knees with a shot, block, does not touch him. C.J. Walsh with a slap shot, and it goes right past the net, and then a diving Piotrowski. So you can see with a couple chances there, try to catch him out of position, not able to convert. And the game remains tied at three. The view not over far enough for the one-timer attempt, but will hold on and goes over to Walsh, who has a shot, but tipped and goes over the net. Once again, stopped by C.J. Walsh, who will just dump it in with players offsides. And there is a penalty called on Kanisha's College after hitting down C.J. Walsh. The penalty is going to go to Doran Oaken. And it is going to be an interference penalty. And it'll send Kanisha's College on the penalty kill once again. A lot more physical game between these two teams, at least compared to last night for Oswego State versus Cornell University. Not as much post-play hit or even post-play conflict between the two teams, but Oswego State seems to have bumped up the aggression here. As a shot from Luke Myers right off the faceoff goes right into the chest of Pio Trowski. 8-12 remaining in the middle period, 156 remaining on the penalty. Oswego State has not been able to convert at all this season on the power play. Kenesha College with a power play goal earlier, however, but Oswego State is still looking for their first power play goal of the season. Over to Marvin, now down to Myers. Myers will pass it over to McNamara, cannot get a stick out after a stick lift, and is cleared down and recovered by Sean O'Neill. Sean O'Neill will wait behind his goalie's net. He waits for somebody to start for a full man rush. McNamara does have the puck and passes it Attempts to pass over to Myers, but it's actually deflected. It hits Marvin Stick. Marvin will go into the zone and hit it back, or keep the puck, rather. And keeps it just in front of the blue line, but it does go out of the zone, and it's cleared by McNamara. And there is going to be a penalty, most likely, on Oswego State for a cross check on McNamara for hitting a Canisius player in the mask. And it looks like it'll be Tyler Zurichowski, but we will wait. Official confirmation. And it looks like another penalty or offsides. A lot of commotion down there. And we will get official confirmation from our statistician momentarily on the penalties. Uh, we're actually going to get confirmation from him now. So officially, it's going to be the McNamara uh, penalty that I announced earlier is going to be an elbow, but it's going to be from Kanisha's College, Billy Lapanainen with a misconduct penalty. And he will hit the penalty box as well. It is going, so there's one minute remaining on the penalty from uh, Doran Oaken. And now there are two penalties here and it will remain five on four with the Suigo State now on the power play for a minute. As you know, it might be a little longer than two minutes. It's a four-minute penalty, excuse me, for, oh, excuse me, 
after a little correction from our cameraman Jerry Pritchard. 17, Lepinen, Le Lepinen, excuse me, gets a 10 minute misconduct penalty. Oswego State will remain on the, well now, actually it is now going to be four on four, excuse me, and Oswego State will be on the power play later in about, a, about 40 seconds now. A shot, and Alex Gloves almost caught out of position, but he is able to stop it and cleared by Oswego State, but Kanichis will hold the puck. Theo Wands now will skate up the ice with a little more open ice now. Now there's only eight men out there and is cleared into the zone. Theo Cup does recover and gets over to his man. And shot from Kanishis College, but it goes over the net. Stopped by Galos after a shot from Matt Canada at the point. So Canisius College will, excuse me, so it is five on four in Canisius's favor. And so they will be on the power play. I misspoke earlier. And the Swigo State will just clear it down the ice as they on the penalty kill with 40 seconds now remaining on the McNamara penalty. And is it icing, however, for Canisius? as Jay Chapman does recover with 34 seconds remaining on the penalty, 550 remaining in the middle period. And it will go down to the side of P.O. Trowski. Kanishas almost had six men on the ice before they skate off. Nishas will recover, however, and try to take advantage of the f remaining 25 seconds on the power play. They will lose, however, Lapalainen, who has two points on the season, including a goal from earlier today, the opening goal for Kanishas. They will lose him for the rest of the period and maybe even trickle a little more into the last period, or the regulation period, I should say, of the game. Knees at the faceoff circle along with Anthony, Anthony Vekic. And he's almost gets away with it, but Kinesis recovers and will hold on to the puck. Vekic with the puck. Vekic is skating around with Biddle. Biddle now almost with a slap shot, but and he takes a wrist shot, however, but goes to the left side of the cage, not touching close. Vekic with a shot now, tries to get in the center, but cannot get it on the stick. Oswego State returns to even strength with 508 remaining, and Mike Nee and Chris Knees almost with a one-handed or one-timer attempt, but is shot by Jay Chapin, who cannot get it past Piotrowski. Hits it right into his chest. Five minutes now remaining in the middle period. Three to three, Oswego State versus Canisius College. If you're just tuning in, you're on. You're listening to Oswego's ACHA hockey with myself, Ben Greco on YouTube Live, the Oswego State's second game of the season after a 6-1 win over Cornell University last night. Luke Myers now just dumps it in, tries to give it to Marvin, but Marvin cannot get it on his stick, but it's held by Chris Walsh and dumped right back in and given to Marvin. Marvin tries to hit it to the center, but cannot get it on his stick, as TJ Walsh just keeps tapping it back in there to keep it in the zone. And it will remain with Oswego State as T.J. Walsh gets up to the puck and is bad away at the slot. Now given to Myers. Myers to Walsh in the slot. Tries to get a backhanded shot, but it does not even hit Piotrowski. But it remains with Myers, who recovers the puck. Myers with a backhand right into Piotrowski, but it's hit away. And it's now in the corner with Kanichis as Oswego State fights for it. With a little more aggression from Oswego State and Kanichis now, after a couple of CJ Walsh with a slap shot, and it goes in under the pads! CJ Walsh, a little deflection, Piotrowski could not see it. The Swigo State takes a 4 3 lead, 3.59 remaining in the middle period. CJ Walsh with the goal. CJ Walsh will celebrate as he got the goal, and it looks like it might have even def been deflected by a Canisius College player and goes under the pads of Piotrowski. Swigo State takes a 4-3 lead over Canisius College with 3.59 remaining in the middle period as they get the puck as play resumes. 
missed pass there as it goes to the boards on the far side for Kenesha College, but is recovered by Oswego State now with Chris Carey, Sean Mooney. Sean Mooney holds on to the puck, attempts to get it over to Chris Carey, but it's stopped at Kenesha's College as they go up the ice with Tyler Flick bringing it up, but it's recovered by Oswego State. And there is, it is thrown out of play into the bench right onto backup goaltender Daniel Dorney. But Dorney hands it right to the ref. And there's no, it looks to be there's no delay of game call as it will remain in the zone of Oswego State, but it remains five on five. Oswego State will recover as Chris, Wan Chris Wands hands it over to Theo Cup, who passes up to Nick Matro. Nick Metro now a little out of reach for Chris Carey, but the icing is waved off. Stop by Nick Metro, who recovers and tries to get around a defenseman to get the shot off, but cannot. And is almost and is stopped by Chris Carey, who keeps the, but hands it off to Kadishas, excuse me, as Theo Cup races back for the puck. So the Walsh goal is credited from assist with assist from Adam Marvin, Kyle McNamara once again proving the the need for that third line and the offensive ability. As Kenesha College will hold the puck in their offensive zone, trying to tie this game up with 2:25 remaining in the middle period as it goes to middle of the point. Takes a shot, but is blocked by Bobby Vasta. Kenesha has it behind the net now as Chris Wands stops the puck, but Luke Myers cannot get a stick on it. And also cannot hit his, Luke Wan, Chris Wands cannot hit it with his body. Theo Cup gets it over to Mike Lemieux, who gets it out of the zone. It is held by Mike Chase Knees. But Kenesha recovers, and Chase Knees cannot hold on to the puck with Justin Durkee right on him. And there is going to be a penalty as Alex Gulos stops the shot from Ryan Loger. There's going to be a penalty on Mike Knees. 150 remaining in the middle period, so Oswego State will lose a player for the rest of the period and into the beginning of the third. Not exactly sure what the call was on Chase Knees. However, Oswego State will still be down a man for two minutes with 150 remaining in the period and up by one, four, two, three. And another penalty on... Kenesha's College, an interference penalty now. And it will go to number, it looks like 22. Jersey's a little rolled up there. Like so excuse me, number 12, Zachary Grace for an interference. So now it'll be four on four hockey. Just like that for the remainder of the period. But Oswego State will have about a three second power play at the beginning of the second period. Not that that will make much of a difference, but any man advantage is a man advantage. So you can see it recovers the puck and a shot from Adam Marvin but goes to the side of the net and it's not even touched, but Adam Marvin does recover and is able to keep it in the zone. Adam Marvin now with the puck and passes it and keeps it, but passes it over to Martin Simonek. Martin Simonek has a shot, but it's blocked by Piotrowski and shot by Jay Chapin, but it's deflected and goes to the side, not even touching Piotrowski. It is in the back of the net as the referee will help play and there's a little bit of an after whistle scrum. No penalties, however, from the looks of things, will be assessed. We're gonna get official confirmation on the penalties from both Chase Knees and number 17, excuse me, number 13, is 12 again, apologize, Zachary Grace, as it goes into the zone. The Chase Knees penalty is a holding penalty. I was not aware what the referee did when he blew the whistle, but Chase Knees will be called for, for holding. As it looks like there's an injured player down on the ice after a hard hit from Sean Mooney on 
Anthony Vekic. Vekic right into the corner of the boards. And Vekic will remain on the ice. And looks to be skating a little slowly. As we await anything further. 104 remaining in the middle period. 114 on the Chase Knees penalty, but 117 remaining on the Zachary Grace penalty. No penalty assessed to either team as Anthony Vekic does head into the bench but smashes a stick in frustration. It will remain four on four. It will go into neutral zone due to neither team really having the necessity of blowing the whistle. It was just a courtesy for Vekic. Under a minute remaining now in the second period as Oswego State holds a 4-3 lead. But Canisius College will hold the puck and have a shot opportunity late in the period. Matro over to, over, excuse me, over to Sean O'Neill who has a shot. And it looks like there's going to be a delayed whistle call on Canisius College once again with four, 34 seconds remaining in the period. Interference call. As Sean O'Neill wanted a piece of a Canisius player, it looked like. But the penalty is going to go to this time, number 22, Doran Oaken. It's going to be four on three hockey. You don't see this very often. Only seven players skating on the ice, at least, compared to the goaltenders. But seven players on the ice. Four on three power play for the next 34 seconds, at least, for the Lakers. Over to Wands at the point, now to Cup. Wands with it again, back to Cup, and over to Myers. Myers will skate and not take a shot, but Theo Cup will take the one-timer, and it's just wide of the net after a diving P.O. Trots Trotsky tries to stop it. 15 seconds remaining in the middle period. Wands will take a shot. Deflected a little bit by Myers, but goes into the chest of P.O. Trotsky with 9.9 .9 remaining in the middle period. 19 seconds on the Lakers penalty. 22 seconds on the Zachary Grace penalty and 135 remaining on the Doran Oaken penalty. Lakers still hold a 4-3 lead and have actually tied up the shots 27-27. to Swigo State recovers the puck and is shot, almost shot, by Theo C Cup. And a shot by Marvin who scores! Three point seconds remaining in the period. Adam Marvin with his second goal of the game, fourth point of the game. And they will score on the power play with three point seconds remaining, 5-3 Lakers. Lakers take the two goal advantage on their 28th shot of the game. And it looks like Grace is seeing who the penalty, which penalty it's stopping. And it looks like it's going to be stopping, or going to, they're going to return Doran Oaken to the bench as it returns to four on four hockey. Clock did not go, however. So that will be another drop on the whistle with only three seconds remaining. Whoever grabs it will most likely just be skating with it. No face off, but the clock will just go as nothing really would happen anyway. 10 seconds remaining on the knees penalty. 120, 13 seconds, for, actually we will, we will see who is back on the ice for the Laker for the Golden Griffith, however, as the second penalty period does expire. Five to three Lakers over Canisius College Golden Griffiths. We'll be back in a couple short minutes to see who to give you the official goals and official shots and penalties of the of the middle period on a YouTube live with us. We go say ACHA hockey.
Welcome back to the second intermission of Oswego State ACHA Hockey versus Canisius College. A big period both for both teams when Oswego State came away with a 5-3 advantage as Oswego State prepares to come out. It's going to come back a couple seconds earlier, but we've had a couple parents come up and thank us for doing the broadcast this year. As previous years, they've just done a camera. And this is the first year that they've actually had a broadcast team. For the goals for the second period, main, it was, there were two goals each aside. And for Oswego State, C.J. Walsh had the first second period goal with assist from Adam Marvin and also from Kyle McNamara, Marvin's third point of the game and McNamara's third point as well. Adam Marvin would actually score the second goal of the period for the Lakers for his fourth point of the game with assists from Theo Cup and Mike Lemieux. Adam Marvin really making his case for it to be a top player on the Lakers this year in his first season. His father actually just came up to talk to us and said he was playing for the New Jersey Whalers last season. He's a freshman this year. However, for Canisius College, goals included from Doran Oaken for their first goal from number two, Chris Caffel. Actually, from number 20, yes, from number two, Chris Caffel. And then their second goal was from Tyler Zorowski, assisted by Jonathan Newcomb. Alex Galos will remain in net in the 5-3 advantage, and it looks like for penalty-wise, Oswego State's Chase Knees will have 10 seconds remaining on his penalty. Canisius College entering the ice now. We're not sure on the Canisius penalties yet or when uh, Lepalainen will be returning from his 10-minute misconduct. We don't remember the exact time. However, Oswego State does have a one-shot advantage over Canisius, 28 shots to 27 shots. Piotrowski remaining in net for Canisius College. Galos, like I said, in Oswego State's net. Lippalainen is going to remain in the penalty box for Canisius College, and there will be 13 seconds remaining on the Zachary Grace penalty. So there will be four on four hockey, and then there will be three seconds of a power play for Oswego State, and then Canisius will then again return to even strength, assuming no penalties are called as this game has been full of penalties. If you can hear through my microphone as well as our desktop audio, Soldier Boy song is playing and players are ready for this, getting them pumped up for the third period, regulation period, as we go State attempting to hold the lead for the rest of the game. Chase Knees and Grace getting ready to both exit. Chase. Heads back onto the ice. And followed immediately by Grace, who's replaced by Jarrett Werner. Oswego so State with possession in the zone, but recovered by Canisius College's Werner, who sk skates up the ice, trying to get around Theo Cup, who stops it and Chase Knees recovers and gives it over to Bobby Vassa, but back to Chase Knees, who skates in. Gets around a couple defenders, has a shot, but it's stopped by Pierlowski. Piotrowski, excuse me, but he cannot hold on to it as Chase Knees loses his stick but recovers. This week, State will have the puck once again. Offsides for Canisius College as Chase Z Knees and Tyler Zorowski have fall onto the ice. It will go into the neutral zone for uh, towards the Stigo State on the near side. Lepelainen still in the penalty box with 1909, 18, 1908, excuse me, remaining in the regulation period as the Chico State recovers the puck after a Canisius dump. Goes over to Metro and now to Chris Carey. Skates around defenseman and keeps with it despite a couple Canisius guys around him. Carey keeps with the puck and goes over to Metro. Metro now to Mooney, who cannot hold on to it. And this falls to the ice as Canisius recovers the puck with Loger. But it's given back to Mooney, who just dumps it in, tries to get it over to Metro, who does, but Chris Carey cannot hold on as it clears the zone and is held by Jay Chapin. Dumped in by Martin Simonek, but it will hit Piolo Piotrowski. It goes to the corner, but Canisius will hold on to the puck. Goes to Oswego State defense. 
no icing is called as it was waved off, but C.J. Walsh will recover the puck and pass it off to McNamara, but just over his stick as it goes to Chris Caffel. Now with Newcomb, but back to Myers, and goes over to Zachary Grace. Luke Myers will recover the puck and hit it over. Try to hit it over to Marvin, and he does, but it's stopped by Canisius, and it's still in the zone, but it will be cleared out, and Luke Myers has it. Stopped by Gulos with a shot from the left circle, right circle, excuse me. I guess we can see it recover. Luke Myers having the, holding on to the puck with McNamara looking to get it after a thrown puck. No icing. After, as McNamara beat the physical defenseman, Canisius will recover the puck. A little more physical for both teams entering the third period, knowing what's at stake here. Both NEC, both league and the NACHL game. But can you just go outside as they dump it in and Oswego State will recover. A lot on the line here, both league-wise and opening of the season-wise. Oswego State looking to remain perfect at home as well this season, going 2-0 against Canisius if they win, and also look to remain 2-0 in league. Canisius College looks to recover from the recent over overtime win and have a winning record in league. Canisius will have the puck in their defensive zone as they try to recover with 16-40 remaining in the third period. 5-2-3, Oswego State. Theo Cup will grab the puck, but is recovered by C.J. Walsh, who flicks it out of bounds off the glass, and it will remain in the Oswego State zone to the near side of us at the Steve Levy press box. Cardi at center for Oswego State. And a shot, but it is blocked by his own, by Kanisha's own player. And Galos pads one away. Kanisha still has the puck, however. And will slide it over to Stan Powell, who has a shot, but it's saved by Galos. And Cardi will try to keep with the puck, but cannot. And a shot from Kanisha. Trying to catch Galos out of position, but it clears his own. Powell passes it over to Matt Canada. Matt Canada now to Dorn Oaken. It is good to point out now that Billy Lappenleinen has returned to his bench. Not sure exactly when he did it, but they have Lappenleinen back after the 10 minute misconduct penalty. 1540 remaining in the regulation period. 5 to 3, Lakers. The scrum at the near boards of the Oswego State zone. Neither team coming away with it yet. However, Oswego State will gain possession of the puck as Cardi grabs the puck, and there will be a penalty on. It looks like Canisius. Another penalty for Canisius. And now a penalty also on Chris Wands after the whistle. We will wait for the penalties officially from the refs. From Canisius, Doran Oaken once again pleading his case but does not the ref does not budge, and it looks like we will have four on four hockey. We'll wait the public announcer to get those official penalties as Captain Paolo from Canisius does not look happy with the referees as coaches want to have a little chat. Head coach for Canisius, however, St Steve Hertubis is having a chat with a referee as Chris Timmons is going to try to figure out a little bit of a strategy for the Lakers as they enter 4-4. Four four. So there are going to be a couple penalties. 21. Doran Oaken is going to have a tripping penalty. Excuse me, no, 21. Ryan Loger is going to have a tripping penalty. And and from, from Canisius, Justin Durkee is going to have an embellishment penalty. 
And on Oswego State, Chris Wands is going to have a roughing penalty. So it is going to be five on four hockey, excuse me now, now with the extra penalty as Oswego State gains possession with 15-15 remaining in the third period. A shot from Theo Cup, but it just goes wide, not touching anyone. From Metro to Rooney, and it goes really wide, and it hits in goes into the chest of Knees. Didn't know where it was, but he does drop the puck. And now over to Lemieux. Chase Knees cannot hold on to it. As Kinesis is going to try to race up the ice and attempt to get a shorthanded goal. Theo Cup does recover the puck with 14.45 remaining in the regulation period. 120 remaining on all three penalties. Kinesis College does clear the ice clear the puck as Cup recovers. Cup up to Mooney. And now up, almost up to Nick Matro, but can't hold on to it. Cup with a hit. And now back again with Mooney. Mooney over to Lemieux. Lemieux tries to get around the it can't. It's gonna be another Caduceus penalty. A penalty on Tyler Zurowski, and it looked like for interference according to the ref signal. Three players now in the penalty box for Kenichi's College. Chris Wan's the only player for Oswego State. Slashing, excuse me, not interference. Slashing for Zurowski. And it's going to be four on three for Oswego State's, uh, sorry, excuse me, five on three for Oswego State's advantage. And it looks like another player will be entering the box for Kanisha's College. That will be four players. Not exactly sure what the fourth player is entering, but it looks like Tyler Flick will be entering the box as well. Oswego State with possession on the five on three penalty, Adva power play advantage, but Canisius College does clear it out. Gaining some applause from Canisius' bench given the situation that they are currently in with 13.47 remaining in the regulation period. However, Oswego State does come right back with McNamara passing it back to Adam Marvin. Over to Chris Carey who has a shot but it's blocked. Back to Carey. Over to Sean O'Neill, who tries to get around but cannot, and back to Carey. Carey at the point, and it looks like the wa the Wands penalty is going to end, and so is Justin Durkey's, but it's going to remain five on four as Chris Wands cannot come back in yet, and it is off sides. So we'll see what players exit, and for Wands will come back out as well as Ryan Loger for Canisius. Still two players in the penalty box, however. As Tyler Zorowski remains in the box. And I'm wondering if there might have been a little bit longer of a misconduct penalty that we did not hear of from our statistician for Canisius. So you go state it will remain with the puck power on the power play with 48 seconds left for the power play, 12.55 remaining in the 5-3 game. Lakers lead. So you go state will be bringing the puck up the ice with Chase Knees trying to get across the ice, or zone, excuse me, and cannot hold on to the puck after he's shoved off the puck, but it is held in by Theo Cup. Theo Cup over to Lemieux, who gives it over to Metro. Metro with the puck now behind the net and gives it over to Cup. Cup at the point now with Lemieux. Lemieux into Metro. Tries to get a shot off but cannot. Chase needs recovers and cannot hold on and holds on to the puck, excuse me, and gives it back to Cup. Cup with a shot at the point. Knees tries to deflect it. Gets too much of it. Kinesis recovers as the power play will expire with the Swego State taking the puck in the defensive zone and it will return to five on five hockey with 12 3 remaining in the regulation period. So you can say it does have to puck with Hubert and goes over to Cardi. 
Cardi racing up the ice, trying to get a shot off, but gets nothing as he falls and is shoved down off the ice, but Hubert will recover. Hubert loses the puck to Canisius College as they bring it up the ice. But it is recovered by Martin Simonek. Hubert tries to race up, but it is grabbed by T Biddle of Canisius. Once again, grabbed by Simonek in their zone. No icing on the play. Biddle will recover, though, from Canisius College. It's almost grabbed by Cardi. Stopped by McNamara. A little bit of a hit, and then another hit comes in from Brett Dawson, who also is in his first game this season. Was scratched yesterday against Cornell. Now with McNamara skating up the ice, just dumping it in, and there's going to be a change as... Piotrowski holds on to it to stop play. 10.56 remaining in the regulation period. Oswego State leading against Canisius College, 5-3. 34 shots for the Lakers and 28 for Canisius College. Luke Myers will take the draw for Oswego State in their zone. And Doran Oaken will take for Canisius. Canisius has the puck, wraps it around behind their net, and goes over to Loger. Oswego State does recover, however, and goes with McNamara, but goes back to Canisius College as they try to go up the ice to Oaken. No icing, but it will hit Galos, who stops play as well. 10.41 remaining in the regulation third period. Will be on the left side of the net. Tyler Zorowski still in... The penalty box for Canisius College. Not exactly sure what his penalty was or why he's been in there longer for two minutes. But nonetheless, play resumes. It is five on five hockey. As it is going to be no icing, Piotrowski does stop the puck and pass it off to his teammates, but he misses. And Mooney will hold on to it. A sandwich hit, basically, from, from Ryan Loger. A big hit on Metro. A shot from Loger, but a big save from Alex Galos, stretching out his pads to preserve the two-goal lead. A shot from Brian Mosicki, and there's an injured player in the center of the ice. And it looks like that's going to be Justin Durkey, and there's also going to be a penalty on the play. Penalty is going to go to Sean O'Neill. As he's as Durkee is helped off the ice, but can skate under his own power. So it will be a it's a five minute penalty actually for O'Neill, and he's off the ice. He's done for the game. Oswego State will lose O'Neill for the rest of the game. And Chris Timmons does want to talk to the ref to get official confirmation. It will be five on four for the next five minutes. 10.03 remaining in the third period. Big opportunity now for Canisius College. Referee does stop play. As there's no one in the box for Oswego State. A little miscommunication there. Our statistician is going to call it in momentarily, and it looks like Brett Dawson will be serving the penalty for Oswego State for the next four minutes and 50 seconds. Sean O'Neill's penalty is going to be labeled as interference, but also a game misconduct penalty, and he is out for the next 9.45 of the game. Assuming there won't be any sort of suspension from the ACHA, but... Something may happen after the game, after this game is published and sent to the league. But we will inform you tomorrow when the Lakers face against Mercyhurst Lakers tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Toronto Campus Center Ice Arena here in Oswego for their third game of the season. Canisius with a shot, but it is blocked by Lemieux. Lemieux has almost gets the puck, almost had a breakaway opportunity, but 
could not hold on to it. Lemieux almost actually shoved into the bench of Kinesius. But he's able to stay out as Fritz, the, the goaltender for Kinesius, is helping him out. Helps him up and out. Kinesius College now with 4-10 remaining on their penalty. And there is going to be a penalty on Oswego State. And it's going to be for too many men. A little bit of miscommunication there from the bench. Going to be five on three for the next two minutes. Barring Canisius does not score. Could be a T penalty. As Adam Marvin, or excuse me, Yami Herbert, the first year Laker from Quebec, is going to serve the penalty. It's going to be five on three for the next at least two, for maximum two minutes, given there's no more penalties nor a goal from Canisius. A big opportunity here for the Golden Griffiths. Keeping solid possession now with Griffiths, trying to get a clean shot in. Shot by Glo it is scored! By number 22, Doran Oaken in between the five hole for against Alex Golos. Canisius will get, the, or excuse me, Swigo State will get Herbert back. It will be five on fourth for the next 346, barring no goals. But Oswego State now only leads by one with 849 remaining in the third period. Five on four hockey now. For the next maximum 346, 34 shots and 30 compared to Canisius is 31 for the Lakers. 5-4 Oswego State over the Golden Griffiths. 848 remaining as play resumes now. Canisius College once again with a solid oppor opportunity to tie this game up. Canisius has only led once in this game, and that was the opening goal before Oswego State tied it back up and then went on to score two more times in the first period. No goal, excuse me, I was looking at my stats real quick. It hits the post and bounces out as Chase knees, clears down the ice and stopped by Piotrowski. As I was saying, they did score, end up scoring two more goals in the first period to take a 3-1 lead. Canisius would tie it up 3-3, but then the Suico State scored two more to make it 5-3. Galos stops the puck off a deflection and it didn't look like Los actually had firm possession before the when the ref blew the whistle, but nonetheless, play is stopped. 8:01 remaining in the third period. 2:58 remaining on the misconduct on the five-minute interference penalty with the game misconduct. As the State comes away with the puck, and Theo Cup tries to clear but cannot get a, off his stick. Theo Cup gets it once again. It does clear, but Biddle stops it right at the line. So the official stats from the goal is scored by Zachary Grace. And it's scored again by Canisius College, who ties it. I apologize for not keeping up with that. I was trying to focus on who scored. And it looks like Canisius College gets it. And it's going to be scored by, based off of line, going to be Gus Aldridge. Ties it up with 7.35 remaining. And this we go state will remain on the penalty kill because of the five minute major. Canisius does tie it up. As I was saying though, number 12, Zachary Grace did get the fourth goal for Canisius, assisted by Doran Oaken and Brian Mosicki. We will await further confirmation on the tie game tying goal. 5-2-5 with 7.30 remaining in the third period. 2.24 remaining on the Oswego State penalty. I apologize, the goal was scored by Anthony Vekic and assisted by number eight, Tyler Aldridge, Gus Aldridge, excuse me. Hubert attempts to clear, cannot stop by Canisius College as Canisius holds possession in their offensive zone. Almost another one-timer attempt from Canisius College, but cannot get a stick on it. A big hit from Hubert into the boards as Canisius's Jonathan Newcomb is a little slow to get up, but he has the puck now. And it is clear the zone after a miscommunicated pass. 
140 remaining on the penalty, 643 remaining in the period. As we go, it says a change attempts to change their lines, gets it, but almost a little miscommunication there as Chris Wands clears the puck again, but recovered by Biddle. Shot from Canisius, and it's blocked by Galos. It stopped, but almost stopped, but it goes off the back of the net and out into the point once again. Lots of opportunities for Canisius on this very long power play, and the advantage goes to Canisius here, being if they score, they remain on the power play. Does not happen very often. Galos almost caught out of position there, but Canisius cannot get a stick on it. Once again, a shot from Galos, and Gaswiga State does recover, and Chase knees will clear the puck. As there's a chase from it for Bobby Vasta, but cannot hold on to it. But Jay Chapman will grab the puck as they are shorthanded. He will try to hold the puck down there as long as possible. There's still 40 seconds remaining on the penalty to try to kill as much of the penalty as possible. Canisius will have the puck once again brought up by Vili Leverlinen. Twenty seconds remaining, five twenty-three remaining in the period. Tw now eighteen seconds on the penalty as a wide shot goes over, but is held by Biddle. Now with Durkey, passes it down to Oaken. Biddle once again to Oaken. And out to Grace, who puts it off Gulos, but it's cleared, but it's taken by Wands as the penalty does expire. Five to five, four fifty-nine remaining in the period. Now at even strength for Oswego State after the clear, but Theo Cup will grab it and pass it off to Martin Simonek. Gets around his defenseman and passes it up to Adam Marvin, who has two goals already. Adam Marvin with the slap shot, but it is stopped on the stick of John Hazlitt and goes into the net. Almost a high stick there for Oswego State. Cup once again, Marvin with a hit, and it is going to be with Canisius's Biddle. Biddle looking for a clear pass, but a stop by McNamara, who has a shot. Stop by Piotrowski, keeping this game tied. Canisius with an opportunity. No one with him, however. As Oswego State is able to almost recover the puck. The sticks with Loger. Hits Galos, but it will go out of the zone, and... Luke Myers has it, cannot hold on to it, to get, attempt to get in near the net. But but the Canisius player does slip and fall there as, as they bring it into the zone. One timer opportunity just goes wide as the State does recover, and Luke Myers does have puck and will give it, almost give it to Marvin, but it's taken back by Canisius. 3.33 remaining in the regulation period. This would be the first overtime game for the Lakers. Obviously, it ended in a 6-1 regulation win yesterday against Cornell. But this would be the second overtime game for Oswego, for excuse me, for Canisius College, as they have had one game end in overtime, but also another game end in shootout against SUNY Cortland. Adam Marvin brings the puck up the ice with 3:05 remaining in the period. Tries to get at the knees, but cannot get the pass off, and goes over to the corner. Up to Bobby Vassu who cannot hold on to it. Now Jay Chapman on his offense and, and Cornell, excuse me, Canisius will be bringing it up. Chris Caffold dumps it into the ice, into the zone. CJ Walsh has the puck. Vassa now with the puck, trying to give his offensive forward some time. Now CJ Walsh has it on the near side. Chase knees, cannot hold on to it, but Mike Lemieux does hit it up a little further and gives it to Canisius. Shot. And it almost, it trickles in! Alex Willis did not have firm possession of it. And Canisius College will take a 6-5 lead with 2.29 remaining in the regulation period. It looked like it might have been tapped in by number 26, Jarrett Werner. But I could not see exactly if anyone tapped it in. Alex Willis, however, did not have firm possession of it. And after 40 shots, Canisius College will have a lead again. Six to five. Oswego State calls a timeout with 229 remaining. Oswego State running out of a little time to tie this game back up now. Now that they, this is their first time, the second time 
that they have trailed in the game since taking the 1-0 disadvantage early in the game. Chico State hasn't had a shot in a while, only 34 shots compared to Canisius is now 40. Delos remains in net, 229 remaining. Canisius getting very pumped up on their bench with a couple jumping players and getting ready to decide how they're going to take the next two and a half minutes to stay, keep with the lead. First line for Oswego State will be coming out in attempts to tie this game up. Simonek over to Wands, back to Simonek. Lines, defensive lines did have to change a little bit after O'Neill's penalty. Chris Wands looks to be skating with Simonek now as it's stumped back in by Carey, over to Matro, and now with Mooney. Mooney kicks it back to Carey. Carey will give it to his defenseman, Wands, who keeps with the puck but cannot hold on very long. Wands does block it, however. It's stuck with Canisius and with Durkee. But dumped down, Simonek will recover the puck. And given over to Mooney, then to Wands, and now to Simonek. Mooney does take the puck. It's, it is blocked and does clear the zone just by a little bit, but Carey will take the puck, or almost take the puck. Recovered by Cup. Carey cannot hold on. Another shot wide by Kudicius as it goes left of Alex Golos. Oswego State will recover as Nick Matro holds on to the puck and gives it over to CJ Walsh, who cannot hold on. But Oswego State is offsides does and avoids touching the puck to recover. Kudicius College will change their lines now. And as we go states, Kyle McNamara will take the puck up. There is a penalty on Canisius College once again with 54.3 seconds remaining in the period. Big chance for the Lakers as they will be on the power play for the rest of the game bar they do not score. 54.3 seconds remaining, Lakers trail by one to Canisius College, 6 to five in the third period. It is, the penalty is going to go to Anthony Vekic. Not the first time we've seen it in the box tonight, but Lakers nonetheless have a 5-4 advantage. And it looks like Alex Galos is getting ready to leave the net, assuming Suga State gains possession of the puck. It's going to be another timeout, but this time from Canisius College, and they will discuss how they're going to handle the penalty kill trying to preserve this lead. Exciting last couple of minutes for Oswego State as they unfortunately gave up the lead with a 5-5 tie after the Sean O'Neill five minute major with a game misconduct. However, Canisius would score once more and take a 6-5 lead after Galos could not hold onto the puck firmly. 6 to 5 as we are 54.3 seconds remaining in the third period. Oswego State looking to tie this one up to potentially send it to overtime. <coughs> I do want to apologize in between the two intermissions our camera's battery did seem to die. We have a Sony DSLR camera and the battery seemed to go off, but the live stream was still going on, so we're glad you could stick with us. We did replace the battery and we will have the rest of the game on here no matter how long it goes. Battery is still full on our second battery. Myers at the cr at the circle and the shot by Marvin and right into Piotrowski's chest. Galos not able to get out of the z out of the uh, off the ice, excuse me, soon quick enough. So Myers will face off again with Doran Oaken from Canisius. Oswego so State really heavy on the offensive side, trying to get the goal as Alex Golos does get off officially, and there are now six-man chase knees. It's going to be the sixth man for Oswego State. They try to keep the puck. And Neil Myers keeps with the puck and goes over to McNamara. Goes into the shoulder of Piotrowski, but cannot get through. Goes off the glass as Oswego State holds on to the puck. 
It'll be recovered by Theo Cup. Chase knees with it now. Cannot hold on to it. CJ Walsh with a shot. Cannot get all of it. And it's a little bit of a chaos, but CJ Walsh eventually does get it out. And now there's going to be passed back to Theo Cup. Theo Cup over to Adam Marvin, or it tries to, but it's stopped by Cassius Escape. With eight seconds, seven and counting remaining. McNamara with a shot. Last second opportunity as time expires for Oswego State. Canisius College wins 6-5 to five over Oswego State after a lot of goals scored and a lot of chances for both teams. Canisius College improves to 4-0-1. 2 0 the NECHL. Oswego State drops to 1-1 and 1-1 and and in the NCHL. Oswego State with a lot of opportunities, up to 40, 40 shots for each team. Lots of offensive power. Lots of penalties in the game as both teams start shaking hands. Canisius' is Piotrowski allows five goals, now doubling his total amount to 10, but comes away with the win. Five-minute major for Oswego State Lakers did cause a lot of harm, eventually surrendering the lead against a very strong Canisius team who now has upwards of 30 goals in four games played. Oswego State plays again tomorrow against Mercyhurst College, also the Lakers, as they will be traveling to Murano Campus Center here in Oswego, New York, at Oswego State University for another game. That's all we have for you here tonight as we get all the game, as the game wraps up, the players shake hands and head to the locker room. Canisius will be heading back to right outside Buffalo slash Rochester in western New York. Oswego State once again, Drops to one and on, one and one after Canisius wins six to five. That's all we got here. I'm Ben Grieco alongside cameraman Jerry Pritchard. We'll be back tomorrow at 1 p.m. at the Morano Campus Center for Oswego State Lakers versus Mercyhurst Lakers. Thanks for tuning in.